Hey guys, come over the season finale of Outlander, season 3, episode 13, Eye of the Storm, and I was kind of on the fence about this episode, and look, I will admit guys that I was a bit harsh on last week's episode, definitely. Honestly, I was just really annoyed with what they did with Galish. She had so much potential to dive deeper into her character. It just seemed like they were reducing her to just such a one-dimensional, mustache-twirling type villain. Uh, just a lot of things about the episode. Um, you know, I just really was not a huge fan, especially that stuff I just really did not like. And especially because at the end of the season, that's when they decided to bring her back. I've been waiting and waiting for them to bring back Gaelus, because I knew it was going to happen. I knew there was no, you know, she didn't die. I knew Gaelus was going to come back, and I've been waiting for them to bring her back. And the way they brought her back, it just felt so arbitrary and rushed and, uh... I will admit, this was a better episode. I thought this was a good way to close out the season. I thought there was some good stuff in here. But, I still can't help but feel that the season as a whole was kind of rushed. And I do think that they wasted a lot of stuff here. Luckily, we did get a lot more good stuff with Galus. Like, what I wanted with her, we did get in this episode, thank God. But again, it just wasn't as satisfying as I think it could be, and that's again because the season was so rushed, which I'll get into that when we get to the end of, you know, this video, but uh, we're just going to start off, which once again, I mean, it's... It's so repetitive at this point. We start off, as we know, at the end of episode 12, Jamie was being dragged away by British soldiers. They shouted for Claire. So, shocker, they start off the episode apart, because I guess that's what they're doing now. We just can't have t at least two episodes where Jamie and Claire are together. They can't be together for more than two episodes. It's ridiculous, but that's what it seems like is the show's standard at this point. But they had just found out Ian was on the plantation of Galus, and uh, basically we start off, we see Claire, she's racing as fast as she can, down a road through that very plantation in pursuit of young Ian, and uh, we first get like this flash forward where she imagines her death. Uh, she's like drowning, we don't know what that's all about, but she visits, she left via a side road that led down to the slaves' quarters. She had apparently gone back to the room that she and Jamie had an inn in town and changed her clothes. Her gold gown was lying in the bed along with a note to Fergus, and Fergus knows exactly what to do with the knowledge that um, Jamie has been arrested. So so Claire quietly calls out for young Ian as she walks through the row of huts. She eventually comes to a small dog rooting at a pile of hay that has legs sticking out. Um, and these legs very well could have belonged to young Ian. So she moves the hay aside to see another young, fair skinned boy with his throat cut. And uh, just then, these large arms grab Claire out of nowhere. And in the house, see Galish, she's still interrogating young Ian. And her manservant, Hercules, gathers, gathers up Claire and takes her to see Galish at the main house. And now, like I said, my biggest thing with... Um, Last week is that it seemed like they were negating any of the prior developments they gave Galus in the season two finale, but now finally they address it. And this I definitely felt very satisfied with. The servants take Ian away as Claire's brought in, and easily, like I said, the best part of this episode is the interaction between Claire and Galus. We're reminded of how great chemistry, um, you know, Katrina Bell and I. Uh, uh, Lottie Verbeck or Verbeek really do have. I think these two work fantastic together, and this episode especially uh, just really showed how great of actresses they are. So meanwhile, we got Jamie. He's on his way with Captain Leonard, and when they're stopped by an island-based contingent of British troops, and uh, basically we then get to see uh, Gray one for I think what probably is going to be the last time we see this character. Um, this just felt very final the way they did it, and I have to admit. Gray has been, I think, one of the higher points for Jamie this season. His storyline has been all kinds of confusing and extremely convoluted because we've just been going back and forth between so many different timelines. It's honestly been very hard to keep track with what's been going on in Jamie's storyline, but... Gray has been one of, I think, the highlights of, um, you know, what Jamie's really been going through in these few years, and uh, I did enjoy this scene. We see he sits behind his desk of the young captain because of his arrest, and the captain tries to explain his 
case, but neither of the necessary legal papers in the form of either a warrant or sworn testimony are in the captain's possession. So since Jamie was arrested on the island and not on a ship out of the governor's jurisdiction, uh, Lord Grey can force the captain to relinquish his prize, and he saves Jamie's uh, backside once again. So I did like seeing, I like seeing him, you know, save Jamie there, but... Uh, we then see the scene where Claire explains the trip to save young Ian, but Galus is just not satisfied, and Galus knows Claire's from the future, just as she was, and like I said, this is the conversation I was waiting for them to have, where Galus is full of wrong ideas about Claire, uh, the fact that you know, she was using this to abandon her child, and that there's, you know, she's not convinced that she went through the stones three times, and Claire tries to explain the truth, and tells her she went back to her own time with her child when the uprising failed, and she pulls out the pictures after Galus doesn't believe Claire traveled through the stones three times up to that point, point. and again, this is what I wanted them, I wanted to see, you know, these are two former friends who are, you know, Galus is getting that clarification, and I like that she was more toned down in this episode. This is the gay list that we know more of. I mean, still this villainous side, that's kind of new, but this is more or less what I want to see from the character. So, Claire mentions that Galus had met her daughter at the university before she left to travel through the stones, and Galus thinks that Brie is the 200-year-old baby mentioned in the prophecy she heard from Margaret Campbell. So, Claire's taken away, locked in a room in the house, and as she's trying to find a way out, she sees Hercules taking Ian by the window and down a path toward the back of the property, and she tries even hard to get out, but then sees someone coming from outside the the door, grabs a weapon, swings with all her might, just the figure enters the room, and um, basically Jamie managed to duck Claire's swing, he's not injured, Jamie quickly mentions Fergus got word to Grey, which is why he's there to get her, and they run out and follow the way Claire watched Ian go toward the woods and the loud drumming, and I thought this was, again, good to see, but I didn't really get the point why these two need to be separated, except for the fact that I guess they just wanted some good stuff between Claire and Galus and Jamie and gray but other than that i really did not see the point for them to be separated but jamie and claire then slowly make their way through the thick grass and trees they come to a clearing they watch a dance that's this obvious ritual being performed by natives and i don't know something about that scene just didn't really sit right with me i understand that it was the culture but it felt more like they, it felt less like they were trying to pay tribute and more like, oh, just l look at these natives dance. Look at, you know, we're, we're paying, we're, we're showing that they were around in the culture. It's just, there are certain things the show doesn't need to show and that's one of them, but Claire's a flashback to the Drew dance that she witnessed in Cragna Dune, and the pair discover their force in the clearing, the dancing stops their arrival. Much to their surprise, Mr. Willoughby comes to their defense, and the ritual dancing continues, and Margaret Campbell's telling fortunes with the natives. It turns out that Willoughby and Margaret wish to be together, so they had planned to leave together here. So Margaret stops short at the sight of Jamie, walks over to take his hand. She sees him as he was in the field of Culloden and the lone rabbit that Jamie saw as he was at the point of death. And she sees the moment Claire experienced while watching a bird on her windows windowsill back in Boston while she thought of Jamie. And she takes both her hands and begins speaking as if she was... Brie, and this is very interesting, the fact that she can so, kind of foretell what's going on and see their histories, uh, but basically, you know, she's acting as if she's Brie, which this I actually did like because it actually found a way to connect the first half of the season to the second half, because I think that's been the biggest problem with this second half of the season. It's just felt very disjointed from the first half, and it hasn't really felt like it's the same season here, though, it really did. I felt like we actually did get some good context here. Um, we see... Margaret sees a monster grabbing Brie. Jamie and Claire become afraid for her. Claire believes Galus means to go back through the place on the island that functions like the stones on Cregna Dune in Scotland, and she notices one of the pictures is missing, the one that Galus took, and they know they're close to the side of another time portal the locals call the portal uh, Abad 
Abindawi, I think is how you pronounce it. So Archibald Campbell comes to take his sister away, and Mr. Willoughby defends Margaret to the point of killing her brother to stop him from taking her. Yeah, that was pretty shocking that he literally was willing to kill him. I mean, he wants to be with Margaret. He's not going to let anyone else tell him otherwise. But Jamie and Claire realize that Galus intends to go back to kill Bree. So that's why she's going back to um, the 60s. So now they must both save Ian and Bree from Galus. And again, I understand what the motive was, but I really would have wanted this to be taken just a little bit more slowly, just for them to back up a bit. I understand it's the finale, um, but if they would have waited, you know, if they would have given introduced her, say, like, episode 10 or episode 9, then I think this plan would have been a little bit more um, clear, because... Just the whole reasoning of why Galus is the person she wants to go after just wasn't as clear to me. And uh, I feel like they could have maybe shown a little bit more with that. Like I said, this whole thing just felt a bit rushed. But I'll take it over the cartoony stuff we got with Galus in the last episode. I'll definitely take it over that. So Jamie, as one of the natives where Abendawi is located, learns it's down the path. And they're able to find the entrance to the cave. And uh, the natives take Archibald's body. They add him to the ritual they're performing and uh, basically they enter the cave, Claire reveals she can hear the hum of the portal, they stop long enough to make plans as to what to do next, and Jamie then instructs Claire that she must save Bree, even if that means following Galus through the portal, which that would mean that they'd have to be separated again, and I was really worried the show was going to separate these two again, because they've done it so much this season, they were apart for the first half of the season, I was going to be really pissed if they were going to do that again, but... Luckily, that's not the case. We see they get to an open section of the cave. They spy Galus setting up a ritual circle that includes the picture of Bree and several gems from the treasure box. And Ian's tied and laying behind her. Galus intends a sacrifice of blood to go through the portal and... Hercules and steps out with a gun pointed right at Jamie's temple. Several things are happening at once. Galus is pouring some weird liquid on Ian so that he so she can set him on fire. Jamie knocks the gun out of Hercules' hand. Claire runs around the scrambling men to confront Galus, and as Jamie has a rather difficult fist fight with Hercules, uh, we see Claire has the more treacherous part of stopping Galus and just as Jamie's grabbing his dick from where it fell on the ground and getting a better of the large servant, Claire lunges to stop Gala. She pushes her away from the portal, which is a pool within the cave, makes a dash for it, grabs a machete, and almost takes off Galus's head. Yeah, that was extremely shocking, but Galus is instantly dead, and uh, honestly, I'm not too upset. They kind of ruined this character last episode, and uh, I do kind of feel like the character has run her course, but... I don't feel totally satisfied because I do think they could have done more with this character, but I understand that this is probably a good time to wrap things up. I think three seasons with this character is enough, but at the same time, I, I just feel like we could have gotten a little bit more there, um, but it was cool to see Claire kind of just take her out in the end. So at the death of his mistress, Hercules stops fighting Jamie, and Jamie then runs to untie Ian as Galus lies dying on the ground. The pool continues to call to her. It takes Jamie grabbing her hand before Claire wakes from the call of the portal. They make it outside, and Claire stands there shaking. She remembers the skeleton, and this was really cool, actually. I thought this was actually one of the cooler parts of the episode. Um, she remembers the skeleton that uh, Joe investigated back in Boston, and again, this is a really cool way of connecting the first half to the second half of the season, where it turns out that Skeleton very well was Galus. And uh, what I think that's saying about the show, I think, you know, that's very indicative of saying that, hey, you know, the time travel on the show... There, it You can't really alter the timeline. That's why the whole Battle of Culloden thing, that's why that didn't work last season. Because of the fact that, you know, time is kind of just one way. It's going to always go this one way. Even if you try to alter it, this is how it's set to be. This is how it's going to go. So, you know, it was already sort of foretold that... Um, Claire was going to kill Galus in this specific time. That is why we go to the Bones, and that's why Abernathy was saying that she'd have to kill someone. So, uh, Jamie's so relieved to have, obviously, his loved ones back. And, again, I thought that was actually really cool the way they connected that there. But, again, the only thing is, I understand they wanted to be like, oh, these are Joe's ancestors, but, again... 
we never really got to know the character of Joe. We saw him in like three episodes and it just was never enough. They could have done a lot more with that character and it would have made this, I think, a lot more effective, but ultimately it just didn't. So Jamie takes them both back in his arms successful, safely for a moment before they head to the Artemis and once back on the ship, they set sail with the intention of returning to Scotland. All of a sudden, they want to return there, which I guess makes sense, because obviously the reason they went to Jamaica is to rescue uh, young Ian. But Jamie starts to shave. Claire stops him, and uh, Jamie mentions he dreamed of a time when he could have her alone, naked, and just the two of them. Claire reminds him that they're alone now, the naked part, so she can fix her really quick. Jamie stops her, explains his desires to have her to himself, body and soul. He takes her over to the bed, finishes the instructions, and and uh, as they're wrapped up in each other's arms, they hear a storm beginning to blow up. The next thing they know, they're in the middle of a horrible, rolling, blowing monster storm. And at this point, I will admit, the last, like, few episodes really did start to drag. Like, it really felt like there was a lot of padding going on here. But the crew tries to keep the ship upright as Claire tries to remind all of Jamie's people to remain below. Claire does what she always does. She heads up anyway with the expectation of being the surgeon and rendering aid. And Jamie's distressed to see her come up on deck because he's doing all he can to keep the ship upright, and it takes two men to keep the wheels steady in the storm, so one of the sailors breaks his leg, Claire and another sailor try to get the man below, just then the mast breaks in a massive wave that knocks Jamie to the rail and Claire overboard, she's wrapped up in some of the broken rigging, and uh, she's taken deep underwater, and we basically call back to what we saw in the beginning of the episode where she's underwater, but again, we know she's not going to die. Like, there's no way the show is actually going to kill off Claire. It's been renewed for another season. If they kill off Claire, then the show would end. So again, there just isn't really much tension here because you know she's going to survive. We see Jamie dives in. He swims to her rescue. And uh, he has his dirk, so he's able to cut her free of the rope attached to the mast. And he brings her to the surface. He finds a piece of flo uh, floating wood, and she's still unresponsive. Jamie's afraid that she's dead. Naturally, he has no notion of CPR are obviously so the scene pulls back to reveal that they're in the eye of a hurricane the next thing he knows jamie knows he's face down a beach he crawls over to claire who remains unmoving as jamie leans down to kiss her cheek claire lets out a cough they sit up and embrace thankful to be alive but fearing that they survived yet their loved ones on the artemis have probably died obviously you know young ian and all those people so a local man named joseph oliver he arrives and explains the artemis did survive the storm at least most of it so, you know, I think Fergus and all of them, they're definitely still out there. And they ask where they landed, and Mr. Oliver explains they're in the colony of Georgia. They made it to America, and uh, basically that is the way this season ends. So, like I said, guys, uh, was this at all a bad finale? No. In fact, I do think this was a pretty good finale, especially when it comes to the stuff with Galus. I mean, after what we got last week with her being so cartoony and so one-dimensional, I thought there was no possible way the show was actually going to get me back on board with her character. But, I will admit, I thought they did a much better job with her here. I thought her stuff in this episode was a lot stronger. You actually did see more of a motivation in Galus. You could see what she really wanted to do. And they did have that, and she did have that great conversation with Claire. And we show the different perspectives they have. You know, Galus doesn't believe that Claire could, you know, time travel like that. It's a bit contradictory because we've seen Galus do it like two times. So I don't know why she didn't believe Claire, but she herself could do it. I don't know, just some of that stuff is a little bit confusing, but I did think that, you know, Lottie Verbeek, she really sold it. She's a fantastic actress, and I understand it was time to kill the character. I totally get that. Uh, I do feel they kind of rushed a lot of stuff, but again, we'll get into that um, once we're talking the season overall. Um... You knew Claire wasn't going to die. Like, there was no way she was actually going to die here. Uh, I knew she was going to get out of this just fine. But the fact she killed Galus, that's not something I really saw happening. I, I had a feeling Galus was probably not going to make it out of this finale. But I did not think Claire was going to be the one to kill her, which was awesome. I thought it was actually a really cool kill for Claire, but I just did not expect Galus to die in such a brutal way. And the way they connected that to the stuff with Joe was really cool, but again, it just wasn't really something I was thinking about all season long. And again, it's mainly because of the fact that these two seasons just felt very distinctively different. And uh, 
We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, they're headed to America next season, which I think is definitely the way to go. Um, you know, I think it's going to put the show back in focus. I think it's going to give us that, you know, more sort of um, urgency that we want in the show that's kind of been missing all season. And uh, le let me just cut to the chase right now. Like I said, good finale overall. I like what we got here. I like the way they closed out stuff with Gray. I'm pretty sure that's the last thing we're going to see with Gray. It felt very final with Jamie. I like the connection that those two do have. If we see him again, that's going to be great. I love David Barry on the show. He's definitely been one of my favorite parts of this season. Um, but the way they, if that is the way they close stuff out, I am overall satisfied with what they did there. But I'm just going to cut to the chase, guys. When it really does come down to it, am I at all satisfied with this season? Hell no. I I'm going to tell you that right now. I really was not a huge fan of this season. And again, it's mainly because of how rushed this season really did feel. Um, and it makes sense, too, because I understand they're adapting a thousand-page book. It's hard to do. But really, what they should have probably done is just, you know, either split this into two seasons... Or, you know, do something where they found a way to make this, you know, so when we see Jamie and Claire finally meet up for the first time, it feels deserving. It feels like this is what we've been leading up to. The first half of the season, it did feel that way, but... Once they did meet up, it just felt a little too soon um, because we spent five episodes with them waiting for each other. And that passage of time, we just didn't really felt. You know, there were so many years going by in um, those first five episodes. And uh, it was a bit overwhelming. I definitely will say that. And not in a good way. Not in a way where it's like, oh, it's, you know, so much time is passing. It's crazy to see. I think the problem with it, in, at least in my humble opinion, is that it really halted the momentum of wanting to see these two back together. The only episode I think that did that in an effective manner was episode two, where you see Claire and certain things are reminding her of Jamie, and, you know, she can't go to bed without Jamie. All that stuff was definitely very well done in episode two. But other than that, I never really had that urge to be like, oh, I really want to see these two together, you know? I really feel they could have just waited, and I mean, I even heard someone bring up that maybe they should have done what season one did, where they had it into two eight-episode chunks, and I would have been fine with that. I think, honestly, that might have been the direction to take this season, because there was so much story to tell, and so much of it felt rushed. I mean, most of Jamie's story, I don't even know where what was going on. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know what was going on a lot of Jamie's story because it was so rushed. One episode, he's on the run as Alexander Malcolm. The next episode, he's running into this chick and he has sex with her. The next episode, he's with, um, you know, Lord Grey. Just everything about his, his arc this season, you know, prior to when he met Claire, is what I'm talking about, everything about that felt so rushed. A lot of it, honestly, is really inconsequential, especially him marrying... Um, Leary, you did not need to take the show there. I mean, I get it that it happens in the book, but they didn't do anything with it. He married Leary, and that's it. It's never, it's not, it hasn't been mentioned again this season. It's not as big as a deal as we thought it was going to be, and, uh, you know, the whole thing of Jamie and Claire, them wanting to reconnect, them trying to get over things that happened... I get that that's what we were told this season was going to be about, but I don't really feel like that's what the season was about. The first half of the season, yes, it was very much about the passage of time um, between those two and the things that they did without each other, but it turned into a rescue mission, and I don't think that's the direction we need to take this season. I think that's what we should have done next season. Like, we could have had one episode, you know, one eight episode season where it's Claire and she's with Bree and Roger, and this would have worked because it would have gotten us to care more for those two characters. And while I do care for Bree, I don't feel she's as developed as she could have been. I certainly don't feel Roger is as developed as he could have been, and I think they could have really done a lot of groundwork there to really get us to like those characters and to get us to feel for them. So when it comes time that Claire is going to meet Jamie, not only are we kind of, um, you know, finally rewarded and we're like, okay, finally we're going to see these two meet up, but we're kind of sad because we're going away from that story. That didn't really happen this season because we spent five episodes with that story, and then the rest of the season was a typical season of Outlander, just, you know, um, like 20-something years later, and 
it just didn't feel as, I think, complete as it really could have. A lot of stuff here felt very under... There, there's just a lot of things here that I think was very underused. There were a lot of things here that I think they could have developed more on. Galus, for example. Uh, maybe I would have been more on board if they would have shown Galus more in the second half of the season. Or maybe show that she's back there or give hints that it could possibly be Galus. They did nothing with that, though. They didn't show Galus till episode 12 and what they do with her her plan just didn't really make a ton of sense what she really wanted to do and uh it just didn't really work for me also the fact that it was in fact joe's uh ancestors again i didn't really care much for the character of joe because we didn't spend a lot of time with him we only really saw joe in like two or three episodes and the episodes that he were in he wasn't even in that many scenes i mean i, I think all together he's had like maybe i don't know five to ten minutes of screen time in the entire show um, and it's unfortunate because he is such a great actor, and those two, and, you know, uh, Catriona, uh, the, you know, Katrina Bell is one of those actresses that just has great chemistry with everyone, and I wanted to see more with them, and unfortunately, we just didn't, and, uh... That's really my biggest problem in the season. I think there were just so many things that were rushed. I think there were so many things we could have delved deeper into, and unfortunately, it just didn't work. However, I will definitely say... The acting on the show is still great. Everyone on the show still does a great job. I think there isn't really a bad performance in there. Um, you know, I think, you know, the new additions as well, Caesar Dumboy, David Barry, um, you know, Lauren Lyle, Richard Delay, Richard, I don't know why Captain Reigns was a, was a main character this season, but he was good for what he was in. Uh, David Barry, you know, uh, um, John Bell, you know, all those characters, uh, you know, the new actors that they got, I thought they were all really good, you know, I thought they all did a really good job, and I really did like, um, what we got with their characters, I just didn't really feel like we got enough with them, I feel like they could have given them a lot more to, especially Yan Yan, we really did not get enough with that character, same with Lord Grey, I think they really could have done a lot more with those two in particular, um, but they just didn't, and again, I'm just left very kind of unsatisfied with what happened this season. This is not at all a bad season, far from it. There were a lot of things that I really did love about this season. Those first five episodes are really good, and I think those first five episodes are definitely very well done. Episode six, when Jamie and Claire met up, that was a perfect, um, a near perfect episode. I love the way that was done. I just wish that would have been what most of this season was. You know, I wish most of the season would have been those two, you know, maybe slowing things down a bit, getting to know what the other um, character has done, and spending most of the season on things that Jamie has done in his past that is now reflecting them um, in the present. I think they could have done that very well. They could have showed the disconnect that Claire has with modern society even more now because she is so, you know, focused on modern society and she knows where they're going to go. Um, but they just didn't do that. There were just so many things that, you know, it just seemed like the show, they, holy, holy shit, we're getting to the end of the season. We need to have some sort of entry going on. So they just threw in this whole thing with Ian and it just really halted any sort of momentum, uh, honestly, it did, and it just really left me very unsatisfied. Like I said, ultimately, this is not at all a bad season. I just really was left wanting a lot more. I think there were just so many things that were just swept under the rug, and they really could have waited for, and uh, in the end, I just didn't feel as satisfied as I really could have been. But now, guys, I am going to rank both the finale and the season as a whole. So, for the finale of Outlander Season 3, I am going to give the finale overall a a B minus, a well done finale, but again, I did feel that rush tone, and the ending definitely did feel like a lot of padding, and they didn't really know how to end it, and the season as a whole, unfortunately, I am going to give a C plus. And with that, guys, Outlander Season 3 has now come to an end. Like I said, I'm sorry that I was a little more negative on this season, but I just wanted a lot more. I mean, they set things up for a really cool season. I thought we were going to get some really different stuff, and what I got, unfortunately, was five episodes of something different, but then the rest of the season was just more of the same, and uh, something definitely does need to change. There were so many characters I wanted to see more of, but either way, guys, let me know what you guys saw this season overall and the finale. Loved your thoughts on all that stuff. That's in my review. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.